Silicon is a semiconductor and its main applications fall into three categories. First, solar cells and components in electronics, like for example, your mobile telephone and your computer. In this group, one utilizes the semiconducting properties of silicon. The next category is aluminium alloys. Silicon is added as an alloying element to aluminium to enhance the properties of the alloy. The last category is the increasing use of silicon to produce silicones. Silicones have numerous uses from baking products to stickers. The Earth's crust comprises 28% silicon and 47% oxygen by weight. There is a large abundance of silicon and the Earth's crust consists mainly of oxides, such as silicon dioxide. If one wants to produce elemental silicon, one needs, however, quite pure silicon dioxide sources, and hence most producers of silicon import silicon dioxide. The silicon produced directly from silicon dioxide is known as metallurgical grade silicon, and the pure silicon dioxide material is called quartz. To produce metallurgical grade silicon, one needs quartz, the raw material that contains silicon, and coal to remove the oxygen from the quartz, and wood chips to maintain good permeability in the furnace for the gas to escape. Silicon is produced in large industrial furnaces. The production process requires large amounts of energy, 10 to 12 megawatt hours per tonne of silicon produced, as well as utilizing high temperatures up to 2,000 degrees C in the lower part of the furnace. The electric energy is supplied via three large carbon electrodes that are submerged into the raw materials. The electrodes will gradually be consumed and therefore new electrode elements are added by screwing them to the top of the furnace electrodes. The quartz, carbon and wood chips are added from silos at the top of the furnace. As the materials are conveyed through the furnace, the oxygen is removed from the quartz and liquid silicon is tapped from the lower part of the furnace at high temperatures. The liquid silicon is tapped into ladles where small parts of aluminium and calcium are reduced. After this refining process, the liquid silicon is cast into beds to solidify. The solidified silicon is then crushed and shipped to the customer. The simplified equation of the silicon production process shows silicon dioxide reacting with carbon to produce silicon, which will be tapped from the furnace, and carbon monoxide gas that will ascend through the materials in the furnace. There are, however, two important species that will also be present in the furnace, silicon carbide and silicon monoxide gas. If we focus on the area around one of the electrodes, we can see the major zones in a furnace. In the lower part of the furnace, the temperature is about 2000 degrees C, with the energy being produced by the arcs from the electrode to the liquid silicon at the bottom of the furnace, or to the silicon carbide crust that has formed. In the arc itself, the temperature is much higher. The arc is produced because there is a cavity around the electrode tip, which is filled with silicon monoxide and carbon monoxide gas. As one goes up the furnace, the temperature decreases and a mixture of melted silicon dioxide and silicon carbide is over the cavity. Liquid silicon is very viscous and the material mix will not flow down naturally. As a result, the cavity roof is formed. This is a very simplified picture and during industrial excavations, many different zones and geometries have been found. However, the common picture is the presence of the cavity, alpha silicon carbide built up in the furnace, and partly transformed raw materials in the top part of the furnace. The temperature on the top of the raw materials is approximately 1000 degrees C. The most important reaction in the so-called low temperature zone is the reaction between carbon and the ascending silicon monoxide gas. As the production of silicon monoxide gas consumes a lot of energy, the energy consumption will have a strong correlation with the silicon monoxide loss out of the furnace. 
The main role of the carbon added will hence be to capture the silicon monoxide gas before it leaves the furnace. The brown condensate will agglomerate the quartz and the silicon carbide particles as shown in the picture. Micrographs of this brown condensate shows that it is silicon embedded in a silicon dioxide matrix. When this condensate is heated as it descends with the raw materials, the silicon will accumulate into larger silicon drops and then finally, at high enough temperatures where both silicon dioxide and silicon is melted, the silicon will flow out of the silicon dioxide matrix. As the condensates prevent the materials going down in the furnace, the materials are mechanically pushed down with a stoking machine. Some silicon can also be produced in the silicon carbide particles higher up in the furnace according to the reaction as shown in the micrographs from a pilot scale furnace experiment. As the carbon monoxide and the remaining silicon monoxide gas are leaving the furnace, they will combine with air at the top of the furnace. The carbon monoxide and silicon monoxide gases will oxidise into carbon dioxide gas and silicon dioxide microparticles called microsilica. Microsilica is an important byproduct and is typically used as filler in concrete and to produce refractories. To summarise the metallurgical silicon production, the raw materials added to the furnace are silicon dioxide and carbon materials. Wood chips are added to increase the permeability of the materials to facilitate gas flow. The materials are added to the furnace at approximately 1000 degrees C and will be gradually heated to 2000 degrees C. The liquid silicon will be tapped at the lower part of the furnace into ladles where the trace elements of aluminium and calcium will be further reduced. The liquid silicon will then be cast, solidified, crushed and shipped to customers. The microsilica will be separated from the off-gas in filter bags and the remaining hot off-gas may be processed via an energy recovery unit to produce electrical energy. As Norway has a large amount of renewable electrical energy from hydropower, there are several plants producing silicon and ferrosilicon, like Elkem, Vaka and Finfjord.